Here I'm going to do a couple examples of adding vectors graphically and talk about some problems I see students run into. So I have two vectors A and B. A has a magnitude of 3 meters and it is pointing directly northeast. Vector B has a magnitude of 2 meters and it is pointing directly east and I want to add A plus B. So using the tail to tip method I'm going to leave the A vector where it is and I'm going to translate but not rotate the vector B so that the tail of B is at the tip of A. Next, I take my resulting vector is going to be the one starting from the tail of A that goes to the tip of B. And so now I want to find the magnitude and the direction of this C vector, C. So I'm going to use basic trigonometry to do this, in particular the law of cosines and sines. And so if that is not familiar, you will want to brush up on that as well. So I know that the length of this side of this triangle is 3. I know the length of this side of this triangle is 2. And I know one interior angle. I know that this angle here was 45 degrees because the A was pointing directly northeast. And so each side was 45 degrees. So this is a right angle there. And so if that's 45 degrees, then this is 45 degrees, which means this angle is 180 minus 45 degrees. And so that angle is 135 degrees. Let me call that theta. And so I know theta is equal to 100 and 35 degrees. So I can now find the length of C using the law of cosines because I have two angles and the, sorry, two sides and the angle between them. The length of side C, which is the magnitude of the vector C, C squared, is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2A times B times cosine of the angle theta. And this is important for this formula to work, this angle is opposite this side C. So I've put all in those numbers. A squared is 9, B squared is 4, 2AB, cosine of 135, which happens to be negative 1 over the square root of 2. Putting that in my calculator, I get 21.4852. And so C, which is the square root of that, is then 4.8. 635222. And so I'm going to leave all those digits in there for now. So I have the magnitude of C. Well, that's good, but now I need the direction. How do I find the direction? Well, what I want is, is this angle right here, but I don't know how to find that. But I can find this angle here because it's just part of that triangle. In this case, I could use the law of cosines again but I can also use the law of sines, and so I'll do that this time. So the law of sines says if I call this angle phi, the law of sines says that sine of phi over the length of the side opposite it, which is b in this case, is equal to sine of 135 divided by the side opposite it, which is c. Solve this. Sine of phi is b over c times sine of 135. If I put in values for that, 2 over 4.635222. I'm keeping those digits so I don't have rounding errors. Sine of 135 is 1 over the square root of 2. Well, I know 2 over the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2, so I'm going to do that now. That helps I don't plug in so many numbers into my calculator if I can do some of this ahead of time, and it decreases the risk of calculator error. And now I take the inverse sine of that, and I find that phi is equal to 17.76. Remember that that's not the angle I'm looking for. That's this angle, and what I want is this angle, which I'll call alpha, which will tell me the degrees that C is north of the direction east. That's easy enough because I know that this angle right here is 45, and so alpha is going to be 45 minus phi, which is 27.24. So my 
Final answer is C has a magnitude of 4.64. I'll bring it down to three significant figures for my final answer. And a direction of 27.2 degrees north of east. Now, I should say, watch out for the law of sines. I've redrawn my triangle here. I had A, B, and C with those values and these two interior angles. What happens if we try to check our work and go back and try to solve for theta? The law of sines tells me that sine of theta over C is equal to sine of phi over B. If I just solve that, sine of theta then, 4.6352 over 2 times sine of 17.76. And if I put all that in there, I get something that's 0 0.706942, and then I put in my calculator the inverse sine of that, and I get theta of almost 45 degrees. In fact, I get 44.987, or 45 degrees, which is not correct. Theta is 135 degrees. And that's because sine theta is dual valued between 0 and 180 degrees, and your calculator is going to give you the lowest value. And so you have to be careful if you have angles that are greater than 90 degrees and you're trying to use the law of sines. Let me show you what that means. If you're having trigonometry problems, it is ridiculously handy to have the graphs of sine theta, cosine theta, whatever you're working with around. So you actually look at the graph. That is a huge help. If we go to your point 0.7 here, now an angle at a triangle has to be between 0 and 180 degrees. And so you can see the point 0.7 shows up at two places at 45 and 135. So both of those angles will give you sine theta of point, point 0.707. And so your calculator is usually not going to give you both values. There's an infinite number of solutions to that, to that question. But there's two of them between 0 and 180, which are the key, uh, which is the range for angles in a triangle. And since it's going, the calculator will give you one of them, it will give you the lower one. So you have to be aware of that. So if you have an angle greater than 90 degrees, the answer is the larger one. Notice that cosine does not have that problem. Here's a graph of cosine theta versus theta. And in the range between 0 and 180, cosine theta is single valued. There is only one solution. So one final thing to look at. I have two vectors, vector A, 3 meters, 60 degrees north of east, and B, which is 1 to meter, 30 degrees west of south. So I need to translate B to A to do the tail to tip method. But where exactly are these pointing? If I have, so here's east, north, that is 60 degrees. This is south, west, so that's 30. Where is that? If I just extend A here, that angle is 60, like the same as that. That means this angle is 30, and so that angle is 30. 30 degrees west of south is in fact exactly on along this line. So when I translate B onto A, it is going to go exactly back on the line that contains A. So sometimes you have to be careful about your trigonometry, or just your geometry, to make sure that the vectors line up in the right place. And so now the math is really pretty easy because I know that this full length is three meters. This is one meter. And so the resulting vector 
goes from the tail of the first vector, which is A, to the tip of the second vector, which is B. And so my result, C, has a magnitude that's just two meters, because it's in a line, in a direction that's in the same direction as A, which is 60 degrees north of east. This is the shortest vector C that is possible by adding two vectors, three meters and one meter. If I have two vectors, A and B, the minimum value of the, the magnitude C is the absolute value of the difference of their magnitudes. Three minus the magnitude three minus the magnitude one is two, so two is the minimum value that C can have. Its maximum value is the sum of the magnitudes, which is always positive, but I just put absolute values there. If, they, if A were and B were in the same direction, then three plus one is four. Four is the maximum value that C can take. Here's a vector th of length three, and if I add to it a vector of length one in any direction, it could point any direction, here, 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 here. The minimum result is when it points here or is anti-aligned with the first vector. The resulting vector, then I'll just draw it off a little bit, is this one and it has a length of two. So the maximum occurs when the vectors are aligned and the resulting vector has a magnitude that is four.